Okay, um, a warm welcome to uh, those of you attending uh, tonight's North uh, Area Planning Committee uh, and also to our viewers watching live on the Council's uh, YouTube channel. Um, this is, uh, as I say, the North Planning Committee. I'm Councillor Duncan Flynn. Uh, I'm normally Vice Chairman of this committee, uh, but I'm chairing tonight's meeting in the absence of Councillor Lavery. Um, for those of you present in the room and uh, intending to speak, uh, please note that the meeting uh, is filmed uh, and does go on the Council's YouTube channel and any statements you make will be recorded and made public. Um, you may also wish to know that this is a meeting held in public but not a public meeting. Uh, the distinction being the people, uh, only the people uh, who are the applicants uh, and the petitioners uh, and councillors and officers are permitted to speak. That doesn't mean uh, people from the uh, seating are able to speak tonight, so just please bear that in mind. Um, Please uh, try and ensure that all mobile devices are turned off uh, or at least to silent uh, if you haven't already done so. We're not expecting a fire drill, so if the fire alarm does go off, please follow officers to the fire exits and out of the building to the designated meeting points. Um, I'll go through the committee members and the officers. Uh, starting off with the committee members, I'll start uh, on my left. Uh, we've got from the bottom of the table uh, Councillor um, Dot, Councillor Sansapuri, and Councillor Oswell. And on my right hand side, uh, starting from the bottom, we've got Councillor Goddard, Councillor Tuckwell, uh, Councillor Melvin, Councillor Hagger, and Councillor Higgins. And in terms of officer support, we've got uh, legal advisor Glenn Egan, Anisha Tedji from Democratic Services, James Roger, head of planning, Matt Koloszewski, uh, planning team manager, and Alan Tilly on transport uh, and planning development manager. So um, that completes uh, the team for this evening. Um, can I uh, start with apologies for absence, please? Apologies received from Councillor Lavery with Councillor <coughs> Tuckwell substituting. Thank you. Um, and we'll move forward to declarations of interest. Any? I don't see any from members, so we'll move on. Um, can we please review the meeting minutes from the last meeting, which was the 22nd of January? I do actually have one comment on this, which has been drawn to my attention. Um, the item uh, regarding 17 Elgood Avenue, uh, at the bottom of page five, it states that uh, when put to a vote, six members voted in favor and two abstentions. I believe, and I was at that meeting, that it was five members voting in favor and three abstentions. So. I would uh, politely request that that change can be made, if okay. Does anyone else have any other comments on those meeting minutes? Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm not aware of any uh, items that have been notified in advance or urgent. Uh, all the items this evening are part one, which means uh, can be discussed in public. We uh, did have uh, a part two item, but that has been withdrawn. So um, we'll move on to the first of our um, applications, which is 60 Long Lane. Um, just to remind uh, those of you addressing the committee, you get five minutes uh, and you get four minutes um, uh, with a green light on this uh, display and one minute uh, that is amber to warn you that your five minutes is nearly up. And uh, once you get to five minutes, I'm afraid you will be cut off, so uh, just bear that in mind if you're addressing us this evening. So we'll move on, 60 Long Lane, um, we'll start the presentation on that. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, the application seeks permission for the demolition of the existing detached dwelling and the erection of a two-storey building with habitable roof space to create eight times two bed self-contained flats. Set members through the slides. Um, 60 Long Lane, as you can see, is there. Um, Again, this is the existing site plan. 
in the proposed site plan. <coughs> Whilst it does appear considerably bigger, I would remind members this is actually effectively an amendment to a previously approved scheme. Uh, members refused it, but it was allowed that appeal for seven times two beds self-contained flats. Um, this is the existing first floor plan, proposed plans. Uh, existing is the proposed elevations. Uh, I've got a slide here that would just show members the differences between what was approved uh, at the top and what is proposed now at the bottom. Um, what is, if you can note, it's difficult to probably to see the changes, but the actual changes here are that the ease level of these end sections have been raised slightly. As you will notice here, it kind of all lined up previously. It's been slightly raised and some roof lights have been inserted here in the front. And if you look, it's actually been reduced on the side elevation. There were three previously and now two obscure glazed roof lights. Um, I'll take members through for photos. This is the existing house at present. Um, um, the proposed building measures 21 metres in width and a maximum of 15.1 metres in depth. I'd like to go back to the um, approved plan because that's the most pertinent there. Um, essentially, the changes, as I said, are the slight raising of these eaves on both wings and um, so that th to facilitate an extra bedroom in these elements here. So you've got effectively, sorry, councillor, let me just keep pointing at your head. Um, <laughs> The effect is that you can have an extra um, two bed flat. Um, <coughs> excuse me, it's considered the proposal will not significantly impact on the amenities of neighbouring occupiers and will provide adequate living accommodation, amenity space, and parking provision. I'll just take members straight to the addendum at this point. Uh, we received um, a letter on Monday from a neighbour at number 62, um, sorry, from number sorry, one, Milton Close. Um, referring to number 62, which is the adjoining property. I'd like to take members back to the location plan. So, our application site here, number 62 here. And they've got a first floor element here. This is a single story garage and rear extension. Um, in the officer's report, it refers to the two side windows here. We refer to those as um, secondary windows. It's, we've been advised, however, that contrary to the approved plans for the extension. So it's actually the window here, so the rear bedroom is actually the main uh, window and that the rear facing window is part of an ensuite or a in sort of walk-in wardrobe type um, configuration. So what we've done, we asked the um, applicants to change the, the, uh, the plans. If you note in your plans book, there's actually a slightly different plan. There's four um, roof lights along here. So what we've actually asked them to do to prevent any overlooking of the adjoining properties is to move the two bedroom windows to the front and the back and these two are the bathroom windows and they will be obscure glazed and that will prevent any undue overlooking of the neighbouring property. Um, also, one of the issues that was raised on Monday was the potential impact on the other property, at number 58. I'm not sure how clear this photo... Okay, so um, the side window of this property. That isn't actually the side window. It does look like it from here. This is actually like a, um, a sort of a side garage shed type building in the application site. The side window's on that red elevation there, which is actually behind it. I've looked at the uh, recent plans on the submission that was made, and I can confirm that it's actually a secondary window to a living room. There's a window here at the back and at the front that serve the same room, so we're confident there's no impact, undue impact on that property. Um, we're also proposing to um, amend Condition 2 um, because we've received the three amended plans, and also we're proposing an additional condition just to ensure that the first floor level side facing roof lights facing both 58 and 62 uh, shall be glazed with permanently obscured glass to prevent any future overlooking. Um, and for the reason summarised, it's recommended that the application be approved. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Um, I have uh, a petitioner um, that wishes to address the committee. I think that's Rebecca Hughes. Um, please uh, come forward to the microphone. That's that's fine. That's fine. As I say, you have five minutes, okay. and please press the microphone once you're ready to start. 
Thank you. Uh, evening. Thank you for your time. As you said, I'm Rebecca Hughes. I'm from number one, Milton Road, not Milton Close, um, and I'm speaking on behalf of the 20-plus petitioners. Um, we're disappointed to be here again for a third time. Uh, we would like to thank the Planning Committee for its support since this began in 2017. Um, as a group, we were upset and hugely disappointed by the approval given at appeal for the applicants last scheme, but we understand that objections can only be raised above and beyond this approval. We get that. But we're extremely surprised that the planning officer has recommended approval for this plan and furthermore we're left feeling very nervous of the process after the late changes made 24 hours ago based on the information we gave the planning team. Um, if we'd not had this, permission, this petition in place, um, we may not have seen the report and we may not have been able, able to offer the relevant correction, so please understand our nervousness. But we object on three main points because we understand that you have to have those main points. Um, so it's a lack of amenities, number one. There's been no changes made to the plans for parking, refuse or bike storage from the previous applications, which is odd because um, it's going from seven flats to eight. Uh, the appeal officer and the planning officer have both put a condition on this development to provide further details for all. The conservation offer has also um, requested more information. And it seems odd that after so much time and effort has been put into these applications and after the items above have been raised to the applicant in every report this commenced, um, since this commenced, that we still don't have that clarity. So eight flats, eight parking spaces, no disabled space, no visitor space, electric, I go on. Bins, again, there's no change for the extra flat. These are also squashed against the neighbouring property's fence, and there's a high fear of pests. Currently, um, at 66 Long Lane has an ongoing issue with rubbish being put out front in bags, not bins, because there isn't um, proficient um, space there, um, and uh, whether the council are aware or not, but it is ongoing. Um, the bike store, there's only one access, the bins block one side, um, and actually the bike store is shown to be put up inside the current screening, um, and I'm not sure how you cut the bottom of a hedge down but keep the screening at the top, I'm you know, being slightly facetious. Two, loss of privacy. Um, from previous comments from this supporting committee, um, you've agreed that balconies are not an allowable feature of the conservation area. We understand that these were agreed at appeal, but we now have two flats at the first floor with these Juliet windows balconies in the living area. Previously, it was just one with its living area and bedroom with Juliet balconies. By their nature, people will sit by them and overlook. So in summary, we've now got at the rear four beds and two lounges from two flats overlooking, um, whereas previously it was one lounge and two bedrooms from one flat. Um, we also, uh, we've already spoken, you've already spoken about this, we also questioned the additional side windows, which I'm, you, you refer to as roof lights, but are actually windows. Um, and we, we questioned this with planning earlier this week, and as we believe one of the rooms overlooked um, and did not rely on the, the, main, the window as a main window. This was incorrect, so 24 hours ago we received an amended drawing, drawing moving the side window. So we've now gone, as you saw, from, you know, originally we went from three to four, and now we've gone back down to two with an additional two at the front and the rear. Sorry if it sounds confusing, but you can imagine how much it is for us getting this stuff very quickly and, uh, you know, very short time. But basically, all of these roof lights, which are windows, whether they're on the side or whether they're on the rear, are overlooking, um, and that, therefore, is a lack of privacy. And actually, by moving two of these lights um, to, to the rear, actually, one of them looks directly into one of the neighbour's bedrooms. So, again, we feel the loss of privacy should allow the committee to refuse the application, and if not, please understand our nervousness around these last-minute changes, which greatly affect the neighbouring properties but some feel are not impactful. Due to the changes, should it not at least go for public consultation again to allow all to comment in full? So, and then we believe it's an overdevelopment and the extra flat, I think, so it speaks for itself. So we hope you will support us again for the reasons stated above. But if not, we ask you for your advice assurances on how we as the neighbouring properties and community are ensured consultation on any changes subsequently requested. Furthermore, what measures will be put in place to protect our privacy and how these will be implemented and enforced? Please understand our nervousness and hesitation after these last changes and the list of conditions for things we feel should be detailed and secured in planning. Also, this is the third time we're here and we've also been involved in an appeal to the Secretary of State. So we are aware that we could well be back again, potentially looking at even more flats. Thank you for your time.
Thank you very much. If you could possibly turn the microphone off just for a moment. Um, does do any councillors have any questions for the petitioner? No, I don't see any hands, so thank you for your, for your presentation. Do we have anyone here from the applicant or their agent? Yes. Could you please come forward? Again, the rules are the same. You have uh, five minutes. Um, my name is Geoffrey Gillette. I work for the uh, Gillette McLeod Partnership and I'm the applicant's architect on this project. Um, we have to uh, consider the previous consent on the site and the, uh, the changes that we were proposing, which have, are, are uh, fairly uh, minimal in terms of the footprint is the same. Um, the elevations are very, very similar, as you can see. I think this has been very well explained by the, um, the planning officer who's presented the, the case. Um, as far as the points raised by the petitioner, the amenity space is considered to be acceptable and meets the, the current standards. Um, so there is no, I, I don't believe there's any issue with the amenity. Um, we're talking about eight flats as opposed to seven flats, so the amount of activity in the rear area is going to be pretty similar. I wouldn't have thought there's going to be uh, an issue um, uh, on, 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 on the grounds of amenity. I can't understand that being raised as an issue if we more than comply with the council standards. But um, and it's, it's clear from the report that the living environment for the future occupants of the uh, properties is catered for uh, within the scheme. Um, the uh, other issues raised um, were related to rubbish uh, and the uh, I don't really understand that, that that's really a planning issue. Uh, I don't know if it relates to rubbish on the existing site or the proposed site but we propose a bin store which is conditioned to we have to provide details to justify that situation and um, we will provide details. Um, the other uh, points raised uh, relate to the late changes to the application but I would say that the, uh, all the neighbouring properties and the consultations and the notice went outside the site in, in good time and to my view people had sufficient time to respond to that. We were notified there was an objection uh, a couple of days ago, a couple of days before the committee, and we responded very quickly uh, to the planning department and rectified or put amended plans in very very quickly. And I, I think we should be uh, commended for doing that and, and responding very quickly to an objection which was which, which was raised and hopefully um, that it's solved the, uh, the, the problem. I mean, it has... The, the planning officer is satisfied that it does solve the problem. And if you look at the existing plans, there are actually more roof lights on the existing plans than the proposed plans. So it's actually, in that respect, an improvement, I would suggest. But um, that's for, obviously, the, you as committee members to judge for yourselves. But I'll just sum up by saying I think the scheme is, is virtually identical to the previous scheme. We've managed to re-plan the space internally to get an extra unit. Some of the units are smaller uh, and that's mainly where the additional space has come from. Um, we're not particularly enlarging the, the, the bulk or volume or footprint of the building. It's just a reconfiguration of the space which I think provides a, a valuable additional unit that uh, adds to the housing stock. And um, I think uh, you should uh, uh, judge it on, on its merits and I don't think you should consider what we might put in in the future in terms of uh, a larger scheme because well, frankly I'd, I, it's not going to happen but uh, you have to judge it on its merits and that's really all I've got to say so I'll leave it, uh, leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do any members of the committee have any questions? No. 
So we'll now throw the um, item open for discussion. Um, I see a few hands. I see Councillor Oswell first. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, how are we on the 10% uh, rule as far as flatted developments are concerned on Long Lane? You got any idea? Uh, well, the problem is that the seven flat scheme, which is the uh, top slide, can be implemented. So this has um, it, it, the horse has bolted on that particular one with regard to this particular site uh, because uh, the applicant can, can implement the seven flat scheme and so by approving this application there's no greater impact on 10% rule. Um, yeah. I, to, just to identify, I, I, I think this is one of those applications your hands are slightly tied um, because the level of change is not so substantial that I think members will be able to identify any reason to refuse it and that basically means the only outcome is you can approve it <laughs> if I can perhaps help members slightly um, I see Councillor Tuckwell yeah um, I, I know we're kind of hamstrung a bit by the, the appeal decision and the like but <clears throat> I'm not sure really um, the, the petitioner mentioned uh, concerns over overlooking um, perhaps we can just have a little bit more detail around that just to understand the impact of that. <coughs> um, thank you, Councillor. Yes, I, th I believe what the petitioner is referring to, I think the petitioner is referring to the overlooking from the two new roof lights here and here backwards. If I'm right, if I'm wrong, please do tell me. But I think she's referring to that relationship. Is that correct? Sorry, I need, I'm not... Yeah, well, Mm. Hang on, yeah. can we not have uh, comments yeah. from the floor? As I yeah. said? No, no. Yeah. So it's to that that relationship backwards. But if you look, you've already got like, you've got the two elements here that already look backwards anyway. So it doesn't make it, in my view, any worse. Also, I've got a photo of the back garden here. If I can just um, show you, that's the view from the house to the back. And it's on, yeah. It is, it is, but that's going to be slightly high, but it's got a very high laurel hedge, which, according to the plans, is being retained. So, thank you. If I can say a point that I think might really help members with this. So, obviously, the impacts on different neighbours are slightly different, but if we focus on number 62, so, so the information we've had in the past week is that number 62 actually has one of their bedrooms with a window facing directly towards the block of flats. So the current position is the developer can build seven flats with three roof lights that are not controlled, so that they're not obscure glazed, they can be opened, looking towards number 62. Now I appreciate number 62 say, well, I might say, well, I'd rather have seven flats than eight flats, but the reality is the eight flat scheme results in two obscure glazed roof lights that are controlled by a condition. So... <laughs> Dependent on one's point of view, and I'm going to argue there is a slight benefit, there is a slight benefit on number 62 in terms of that change in terms of the roof lights. And I, what I'd further clarify is the petitioner uh, uh, isn't the owner of number 62, but we did actually contact directly because the petitioner very kindly shared the contact details of us with number 62. So I'm not going to mention people by name, but we did contact the owner of number 62. So we are satisfied that there is a a bedroom window issue uh, and I'm actually grateful that the architect very quickly responded and we're talking a matter of hours and addressed the, the, the issue so we're kind of feeling that the architects doing as much as we could possibly ask them for and sometimes you get schemes where the developer tries to put an extra unit in and you can see a clear difference you can see a clear harm that doesn't seem to exist here I'm afraid so hence why we're recommending approval uh, Councillor Higgins. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah, we did all that hard work and uh, we get snookered by the um, the guy that doesn't know anything about our, our borough. Um, two things here. Um, why we got purple balconies at the bottom is my first thing. It's really quite distracting. Um, that, that's the first thing for me. But uh, the, the bins and the bike is the bike sheds are, are my concern. I mean, I, and also, can, is there a those windows that are in that side? You showed a, p a picture. Can you just go back, Matt, a couple of with a man in it? Or I think it was a man. Okay. Yeah. No. 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 That. That one there. No. That one there. 
so that so that's where we're saying that that roof light is so yeah. he really has to get on a ladder to have a good look out of the window yeah okay so that that one we can't do anything about because of that um but the bins and the bike shed is important uh, that um we can make sure that they are secured and you know we don't there is an issue of vermin down that road and and please answer the purple balcony things as well please me. I, th I think the pur sorry. I think the purple balcony is just um, uh, what the architect has <laughs> used on his system to draw them. I, they're not going to be purple. It's certainly. Thank you. So, what was the question exactly about the, the bins? The bins. I, the, there's an issue that they're backed on straight onto one of the neighbouring fences. Are they at the? Are they further enough away? to not cause a smell nuisance or anything like that. And also, the petitioner said something about the bike shed with the, the bottom being removed, and that can't, how can that stand up unless it's magic, so. The condition five requires final details of refuse and cycle storage to be agreed. Right. Um, okay. So, so as officers, you're saying that you're going to make sure that, that those issues aren't a concern, because obviously, the petitioner has no, specified these things. I'm asking. I know that you're going to. I know I can see it in the report, but I want to know how why the petitioners raised that issue from the drawings, and we haven't picked it up yet. Daniel, I would say at this stage is it's in the same location as was previously approved. So I appreciate that the comments, but it's already, uh, been, it's already been consented for that location. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Right? Can we? Um, I'm trying to move the conversation on a bit here. Councillor Oswell, I see you're indicating. Yeah, again. thank you very much, Chairman. Uh, I'll move it on for you if you like. I think uh, Councillor Tuck was already said that we're hamstrung with this, and I think we really are because of uh, the the, uh, the the appeal process stymied us really, didn't it? I'll move the officer's recommendations, Chairman. So we have a mover. Do we have a seconder? Yes, Councillor Sanspuri. Um, just to be clear, I don't think I mentioned it at the start, as Chairman of the Committee, the convention is I only vote if there is a tie, so I will not vote otherwise. Um, we have a proposer and a seconder. Can I see all councillors in favour of uh, approving this? Uh, I see uh, that's uh, seven. Um, do we have anyone against? Do we have any abstentions? One abstention. Okay. Move forward now to the next item, which is South Lawn High Road Eastcote. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, this application is for a part two story, part single story rear extension, conversion of the roof space to habitable use to include a rear dormer. Uh, five front roof lights, the canopy to the front, conversion of the attached garage to habitable use, and alterations to the front and side elevation. I'll just take members through the slides. Uh, as you can see here, you've got South Lawn, uh, just off High Road Eastcote. Um, I'll come back to this slide, but this is a slide that shows um, the proposed extensions and the 45 degree lines from the closest hab room windows and neighbouring properties. Um, the reason it's important, you'll note, that it actually does breach the 45 degree line in the applicant's own submission. Uh, this is the existing plans and proposed plans. So you, this is the existing house, you will note it has a, at the front an attached garage. It's a slightly unusual configuration, but it's to the front with a garage door. And these are the proposed extensions. So if I just toggle, you will see. So you've got <coughs> loft is converted with a full width rear dormer. You've got um, it's a part single story, part two story rear extension. So you'll see the single story rear with a dummy pitch roof here. The first foot element and that comes out of the dormer, so that kind of relationship. Uh, the garage is, I'm being told, being converted. Although the plan doesn't, the so the elevation doesn't show the window in it, but the floor plan does. Um, I'll just take members through the. Uh, photos. So that's the front. 
to the existing garage. Oh, also, I forgot to mention, at the front you're getting this large <coughs> canopy, sort of over the front entrance, which you can see here as well. As you can see at the moment, you've got a very um, small canopy that kind of matches the uh, roof form, the main roof form. You've got a garage, you've got the neighbouring properties there, you can see. Um, again, some more front photos, the back garden. Not the clearest photo, but then you can see the neighbour's property there with the conservatory. Uh, and that's the rear of the property, which you can see that's with a r big roof extension. You have the two-storey element there and the big single-storey rear extension. Um, so the rear extensions, as I've just mentioned, involve an almost full-width single-storey rear extension with a two-storey element, which is located just off-centre of the rear elevation. The proposed extension would have a dummy pitch roof. The depth and height of the proposed single-storey rear extension do not comply with uh, local plan policies. The proposed dummy pitch roof coupled with the depth bulk, and the bulk of the proposed extension would look out of keeping with the original dwelling. The proposed roof of the two-storey rear extension would include the pitched and hipped, uh, sorry, would be pitched and hipped in design. In isolation, this would be acceptable, however, uh, as it matches the roof form of the existing house. However, the roof's juxtaposition with the proposed rear door mould result in an incongruous design that would be detrimental to the character and appearance of the dwelling and the wider area. The depth of the front canopy, which I've mentioned, would extend past the line, principal, line of the ele principal elevation line, as such does not comply with the local plan policy. Therefore, the additional front canopy is a large and prominent addition to the existing dwelling. Given the character of the original dwelling, which I referred to slightly earlier, the proposed front canopy is considered unacceptable. Uh, the proposed first floor rear extension would wrap across part of the rear wall of the existing house to a maximum depth of four metres, which complies with local plan policy. Uh, the proposed extension would have a pitched roof to, to a maximum height of 7.3 metres. Um, as the property is a detached house, and set, um, the settings of dormers are not considered sufficient to appear secondary or proportionate to the main roof slope and would have a harmful impact on the character and appearance of the house and the street and wide area. Furthermore, the adjoining neighbour at Winstay, which is, I'll sh go back to the uh, plan I showed earlier, just to show members what I mean. So Winstay, I think that's the right pronunciation, is this property here. Um, so it benefits from a rear conservatory. The proposed 4.95 deep and 3.55 high single-story rear extension of the property by virtue of its size, depth and height would have an adverse impact upon the adjoining neighbours at that property. In addition, the proposed single-storey rear extension would extend beyond a 45-degree horizontal angle measured from the middle of a principal window to a habitable room on the rear elevation, which is the very thing that's shown in the submission. Um, I'll just take members to the um, addendum. Um, just a few corrections where the local plan has been incorrectly referenced in the report. And for the reasons summarised, it is recommended that the application be refused. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Um, can I invite the petitioner to come up to address the committee, please? Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Carolyn Bourbon, and I'm representing uh, Northwood Hills Residents Association and the 23 neighbours who signed the petition opposing this application. This is the third application within a year for this property and we are well aware that successive applications are a commonly used ploy to achieve a much larger extension than would be permitted from one application. The first application was for a rear single storey extension with a side extension extending right up to the boundary with Winstay and conversion of the garage to a habitable room. The garage conversion has already been completed, although this is not shown on these plans. Uh, and here the proposed elevations show a garage door, but there is in fact a new window. The new brickwork which replaces the garage door is a good match for bricks, but there's no pointing between the bricks and it appears out of keeping with the existing brickwork and we're, we're very surprised that this is acceptable. The second application for this property was, was for conversion of the roof space with a third floor rear dormer with three windows at the back and four front roof lights. It was approved as permitted development apparently, 
but this will actually result, because it's a third floor, in a major increase in overlooking for the neighbours. However, this current and third application seeks to create a very large six-bedroom, four-bathroom house on three floors to change the building line at both the front and the rear. And our main objections are as follows. We think this is a gross overdevelopment and it creates a very large three-storey house which is out of character both in size and appearance with the rest of the houses along this slip road which all have two floors. The front elevation will be significantly changed by the multiple windows in the roof and by what has been called tonight a canopy, but on uh, the proposed elevation drawing in um, point one, it's called a front extension. And this brings forward the building line from the existing front entrance. We fear that this also paves the way for this space to be walled in and compromise even further the appearances of the front of the house and, in fact, make another porch. The change in character is relevant because it overlooks East Coat Conservation Area and it's clearly visible to people there. But in addition, an application is shortly to be submitted to designate this particular locality on High Road East Coat and Larkswood Rise as an area of special local character. It's already been described there will be loss of light to a habitable room in Winstay due to the size of even the single story of this part extension. And there is loss of privacy and change of outlook for all three immediate neighbours because of the overall height, the rear windows and a new rear balcony on this current application, um, which is number nine on the elevation drawing and the side window onto that balcony directly overlooks Haskham. So we trust that the committee will uphold the planning officer's recommendation to refuse this application. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do any members have any questions for the petitioner? No, see no uh, hands. Thank you for your presentation. Um, do we have anyone from the uh, applicants? Yes, I see. A gentleman indicating, do you want to come forwards to address us? Thank you. Thank you. My name's Gary Bettis. I'm the architect for the scheme. Can you please put your microphone on, sir? Thank you. Can you hear me? Uh, I think I need to just uh, point out that the previous speaker made an error by referring to a balcony. Um, in fact, it's uh, a flat roof up on uh, below the uh, rear extension window. In essence, uh, there have been previous applications on this property for permitted development, and uh, a big rear extension dorm has been granted, um, and a single-storey rear extension has been granted. So in essence, what we're asking for is a first floor extension at the back, which will abut the rear dormer and has its own pitched roof. I've considered the uh, uh, neighbours either side and hemmed the uh, extension in, so it shouldn't, be, it shouldn't affect their habitable room windows. And I've got um, the other part of the application is for this canopy roof, which is just projecting over the existing facade of the building. It won't affect the building line, and it would never be anybody's intention to infill it at any point in the future. So what we're really asking for is permission from the councillors to approve the, singles, the first floor roof extension and the canopy roof as the previous extensions could be built under permitted development in any case. Now that's really all I have to say on it. Thank you. Um, do we have any questions from members? No, don't see any hands, so thank you. Um, we do have one uh, ward councillor who is present this evening who has indicated that he... Would you turn the microphone off, sir, just for the moment. Thank you. Um, as I was saying, we do have one ward councillor um, who is present this evening who has indicated that he uh, would like to speak, so um, I call Councillor Morgan uh, to speak on the application. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, councillors. Um, I think you've heard quite clearly from the petitioner, Caroline, about the issues that uh, this proposal is having, and the officers have quite well, officers have made it quite clear why this is up for refusal. Well, let's just recap. It's an overdevelopment on one small site. It's overlooking uh, an area of special character, Eastcote, uh, and the Eastcote Meadows. The, if we look at the building line, it's, come, it's protruding from the original building line. It's, I've said that the size, bulk, and character. But also, don't forget, we have this 45 degree line. If you can start, if we start being able to see into uh, bedrooms, lounges, and things like that, you're starting to lose privacy. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would recommend that you go with the officer's recommendations and refuse this application. I believe you've got enough refusal reasons that would stand up quite well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Morgan. Um, uh, yes, the Head of Planning is indicating he wishes to, uh, to speak. Uh, so, uh, put simply, members need to determine the plans before you, which is, uh, I think, the best plan to determine this application on is the one on the screen. Just to clarify this point about the, the dormer and permitted development. So, if the dormer... Uh, if a dorm is done in isolation, it can be permitted development. But what they're doing here is they cut. Is the if they were to build this, they'd want to build the rear two-story rear extension and the dormer at the same time. So effectively, what that means is they they need the full planning for the, the dormer and the extensions. So uh, I'd go back to my original point that I think you just need to determine this application based on the plans before you. There's an awful lot going on. Uh, uh, and as a consequence of that awful lot going on, uh, hence you have five different refusal reasons. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Um, I see a number of members indicating I'm going to start with Councillor Tuckwell. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr Chairman. Um, yeah, I mean, the bulk design, the overlooking, um, I, I can't accept this one, so I'm, I'm happy to move officer's recommendation, but let other councillors maybe chip in. Okay, we've got a proposer. Um, Councillor Oswell. Uh, yeah, thank you, Chairman. I was going to do that, but I'll second it instead because it is what it is. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else wish to say anything? Um, we'll go uh, Councillor Higgins before we move to the vote. Yeah, I just want to say this is probably one of the worst pieces of architecture I've ever seen. So, and uh, it's a dog's dinner, basically. So. <coughs> thank you for that. Um, we'll move to the vote. Uh, all those in favour of going with the officer's recommendation on this? Uh, that's unanimously uh, passed. Okay, we'll move on to the uh, item number 8, 32 Parkway Rice Lip. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, this is another ex large extension to a dwelling house. It's a part two story, part first for rear extension, front porch extension, conversion of garage to habitable use, conversion of the roof space to habitable use, including two rear dormer windows, seven roof lights in the side roof slopes, and three roof lights in the crown roof. I'll take members through the slides. You may be familiar with 32 Parkway. It's a slightly different looking house. You've got the existing elevations here. You would like the house has previously been extended to the side. It's got a garage here. Um, if you just see the uh, uh, roof plan, you can see that the side extension is actually very narrow. It's not, it's not particularly big in terms of its depth. Here you've got the proposed elevations. You'll see on the roof plan just how much bigger it's going to become. It's quite a considerable change. Um, in essence what they're doing is a big two-story rear, part single, part two-story rear. Um, they're raising this element. You see it's got quite a low roof at the present. It's going to be raised to pretty much, well, the same height, effectively the same height as the main roof. Um, convert the garage. You can't quite probably see on this plan but there's like a sort of gable feature here, pitched hipped roof that kind of gives the impression of a two-story front extension, although it's not quite. Also in this section here, at the moment, when I go into the photos, you'll see you've got a kind of a hexagonal type front porch, a very sort of odd shape, but it's, it, it looks 
what you know it is what it is. Also, at first floor level, it's also quite hexagonal. This, but they're going to square it off. So if I go into the photo, it's the rear of the site, as you can see, how it looks now. And again, the rear, um, the neighbouring property there, uh, the other neighbouring property, just set quite a distance away. Um, front, hit uh, five. That's the front again. So you can see the existing side extension there, the garage. You can't quite see because of the car, but it's there. If you see, you've got this kind of, I'd call it a sort of hexagonal type front uh, porch and the top element sort of <coughs> hexagonal as well. And what they're proposing to do is square this all off, which will, in our view, um, detract from the character of the house. Um, some more photos there to show you. I'm sorry. Um, so... Um, in effect, the proposed two-storey part, first floor rear extension, the, the front porch and the front floor extension above the front porch, the proposed pitch and hipped roof over the first floor side rear, side front extension, and the proposed first floor rear extension, by reason of their size, bulk, scale, and design, represent an incongruous form of development which fails to be subordinate <coughs> to the host dwelling and would fail to harmonise with the architectural composition of the original dwelling and would be detrimental to the character appearance and visual amenities to the street scene and the surrounding area. Um, we've just got a couple of addendum items on here. Uh, the first one is just, again, um, incorrect references to the actual name of the local plan. And also just to note that we did receive an amended plan at 3 o'clock this afternoon, um, but it's outside of the uh, permissible hours, 48 hours to receive the plan. So um, we have not consi considered it. Um, for the reasons summarised, it is recommended the application be refused. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Um, the lead petitioner, um, I will invite uh, Mr McDermott, is that correct, um, to address the committee. Thank you, Mr Chairman and councillors and committee members. Um, I'd just like to thank which officer it might have been who actually put this report together with all the recommendations because it's incredibly thorough and I hope the councillors have had a chance to read it in full because um, I don't think anybody could really argue with it. It says everything that I could possibly need to say. I'm here representing the 30 plus uh, local um, residents who signed the petition objecting on a number of reasons. I did ask Anisha whether it was possible, and I did send in advance a couple of pictures. I don't know whether they've been included. Okay, I've been told they've been already been circulated uh, on the 17th for this month. Great to members. Which was just um, a very poor artist, namely me, attempt at demonstrating what the view would look like from the back of our house currently versus what it would look like if this development went ahead. And I've done my very best to make it as accurate as possible. Um, taking the best measurements I could. So if this plan were to go ahead, it would block out about 30 to 40 percent of the length of our, of our garden on the side where the sun comes in, and it would be obtrusive in, in, the, in extreme. I think all of the other points um, have been raised within the planning report, which you haven't gone through in full just yet because I assume that everybody already knows all the other points, but there were several reasons, one, two, three, four, quite um, con detailed reasons as to why this plan didn't fit with planning permission and should be rejected. So I just urge the committee to go through all of those and just accept, um, recognize them in full, please. So thank you. Thank you. Do I see any questions? No, I don't. So... Um, <laughs> We'll move on uh, to the applicant. Do I have anyone from the applicant? Uh, Mr. Shah, I believe. Yep, thank you, <coughs> um, councillors and committee members. Um, so I just want to make a couple of points. Uh, first thing is um, I purchased this property last year as a fa family residence. <laughs> and the main motivation for the extension is because it's going to house myself, my wife, my two children and also my parents. And so because of that, uh, you know, that's the main motivation for why we are trying to extend the property and reconfigure inside and, you know, make the uh, existing rooms as big as possible because it's going to be our long-term property uh, for, for uh, six of us. Okay, um, the other point to make is we only um, were told that we were going to 
that this particular application was going to be included in this today's meeting a few days ago. Um, it was too short notice for my architect to attend. And I did request if we could move it to next month, but that was denied. Um, the third point is, during the planning application stage, my architect and myself reached out to the planning team to try and work with them, to try and uh, uh, get to a point where we can uh, have some plans which could be approved. But at no point did the planning team uh, come back to us. They'd, there was absolutely no contact at all on the, uh, on, on the plans. Um, Okay, so th th that's, it's, we're very disappointed because uh, you would have expected some sort of um, uh, uh, cooperation or negotiation or something where we can say, okay, let's uh, um, uh, amend something here or there, rather than going straight all the way through the end of the application process and going straight to refusal. Um, now, because my architect was not able to attend because of the short notice of this meeting uh, being arranged, uh, he has given me a couple of bullet points that he wanted to uh, wanted me to go through because he feels that um, the report from the planning team there are some inaccuracies and uh, so in my best obviously I'm not an architect so I'm going to make I'm going to do the best I can to explain so the first thing is about the street scene he's saying there's no impact from the street scene due to the position of the house uh, the landscaping and the side extension is set back from the main elevation and we're keeping the current footprint at the front with the exception of the new front porch that extends 80 centimeters from the current one. So it's an only 80 centimeters extension at the front. Uh, the main reason I'm doing that is because I, I rather have, avoid having that side entrance and have a, a more of a, a standard uh, a look to the house, to have a, a, fr a, front, a front door. Um, then distance to the side boundary. Now he's saying the council design and accessibility statement for residential extensions establishes that buildings of two or more stories are set back a minimum of one meter from the boundary. We're proposing to build on top of the existing garage, the foot, of the uh, garage footprint, the first floor extension would be approximately 90 centimeters. Now, so the, the impact would be minimum, but we are prepared to set back the extension by one meter from the, the end of the current garage wall. So the nearest distance to the boundary would be approximately 1.2 rather than uh, the 90 centimeters. Um, on the 45 degree line, um, we, we believe we're, we're, we're in compliance because there's no habit habitable rooms uh, being affected by the 45 degree line. In terms of depth, um, we understand that the guidelines stipulate that rear extension should be more, should, shouldn't be more than four meters from the original house. But obviously we have uh, proposed six meters uh, because we understand that uh, these are just guidelines and each property, if you look at the property, uh, if, you, if you look at the site plan, you can just see um, how, how much gap there is between my two neighbours' properties and uh, the fact that it's, they're staggered. So, yeah, so you can see, so, uh, so when you look at the footprint of the property, you can see that the garage, obviously, we're not extending beyond the garage. We're just building above the garage and the whole extension is actually on the left-hand side of the house, which is not affecting uh, my neighbor or the number 30, because you can see the extension on the other side. Uh, I have seen that uh, diagram, that graphic that was circulated a few days ago. Um, I've shown that to my architect. He says it's completely inaccurate. Um, you know, you can't make a judgment based on, on that kind of gra graphic. It needs to be done by, uh, by proper uh, uh, architecture or so using software, because obviously there's, there's the correct angles that need to be taken account of. Um, on the height and the roof design, um, at the moment the current house already has some flat roofs that are not in accordance with the design guidelines that establish that these uh, should be avoided. Um, the, the key point is we submit, we didn't know, of, another thing is we didn't know about the 48 hour uh, rule. I only, got, I only found that out yesterday. Mr. Shah, can yeah. I ask you to wrap up? Okay. You've had five minutes. Yeah, so we're just very disappointed that the, council, the planning team didn't work with us. We were prepared to work with us. Uh, the architect, um, he's prepared okay. to work with okay. us. Okay, I think we've made okay. it. We've heard those points. Okay, um, does anyone have any questions? No, see no hands. Um, I have received, uh, before we go into the discussion, uh, I have received a written statement uh, by Councillor Douglas Mills on behalf of the uh, free man award councillors. Uh, it's a very short statement, and I have agreed to read it. So, 
Uh, this is Councillor Mills' statement. As Manor Ward councillors, we are supportive of the petitioners and their concerns with this application. The size, mass and nature of the proposed extension will have an overbearing impact on neighbours and create a loss of outlook for them. The scale and design fails to enhance and contribute to the immediate area of Parkway, which has characteristics different from other parts of the manor. Therefore, this application fails to comply with the local plan in a number of aspects and the recommendation of refusal is one we would wish the committee to agree with. So that's from the uh, free Man Award councillors. Um, I will open the discussion up. Uh, Councillor Higgins. I'm going to keep this very quickly. I agree with the officer's recommendation. I mean, this is, you know, this is, well, the other one was a dog dinner. I'm not going to go that far with this one, but, yeah, this is uh, unacceptable, so I'm afraid. Here you, uh, Councillor Melvin. Propose a seconder. Can we take to the vote? All those in favour of officer's recommendation unanimously uh, passed. Thank you. We'll move on uh, now to item number nine, Harefield United uh, FC, Breakspear Road, North Harefield. Thank you, Chairman. Planning permission is sought for an upgrade of an existing telecommunications mast involving the removal of the existing 15-metre lattice mast and replacing it with a 20-metre monopole with six antenna apertures, three 600-millimetre dishes and one 300-millimetre dish along with eight equipment cabinets and ancillary de development enclosed within a 2.1 metre high closed boarded timber fenced compound. Um, just take members through the site. It's the Airfield Football Club located on the southern side of Breakspear Road North. The application site is located south of the football pitch in the southeastern corner of the grounds and the site is located in the Harefield Village Conservation Area and within the Metropolitan Greenbelt. So members of here, you've got your main road there, this is your the football ground, and the site is on the sort of back, le right, back left, back right corner, whichever way you're looking at it, right there. Um, proposed plan, uh, this is the existing lattice structure, that's the proposed. Now it is considerably bigger, however, if I show members a photo from the street. What you're looking at is you see the floodlights, you see other equipment, and the lattice is actually here. So when it's erected, yes, it will be slightly, it will be five meters higher with a sort of large cluster of antennas. But when you look at it, I will go a bit further back. It's there. In context of what you're looking at, and given it's just replacing an existing one, and if you don't you know, if it doesn't go here, it's going to have to go somewhere else in Harefield. So, yeah, <laughs> the uh, proposed replacement monopole, and that, for that very reason, it's con in a, on, on balance, is considered acceptable. Thank you. Okay, I see Councillor Higgins. Um, yeah, it's my ward, yeah. Um, I, I know there's not a lot I can do about this, but having a lattice in a, in a, in a countryside, doesn't, it's not so heavy. This is going to be a quite chunky mask now it's not going to be it's a proper pole whereas the lattice lets light go through it and everything else i just want to know make sure there's that it can we sort of make it green or something so so, so it's not purple yeah so so it's just something it's just just it's just to harmonize a bit better i know i can't you know it's things but uh, apart from that i will support the application uh, is that a proposal yes. okay so condition four we've asked for details of the external colour finish yeah. um, I'll be totally honest we're, we're not totally sure what the best colour finish would be yeah. uh, um, so through, through condition 4 we, we, we in, the intention is to get details so that we can then agree the best colour finish yeah, if you can get um, through you chairman yeah, if you can get details visible would be good <laughs> but uh, um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure, sure I can say I any more. Well, obviously, the reason this is for approval is it's basically the best location um, in Harefield. Uh, I saw Councillor Goddard indicate. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, if we have to have a mast in Harefield, I can't think of a better place. 
Um, so for that reason, I move officer's recommendation. That's a second. That's seconding, Councillor Higgins. Councillor Oswald, did you want to? Did, yeah, thank you very much, Chairman. Just before we go to the vote on this, I did ask a meeting last year about maintenance of cabinets and, and colours because they don't get maintained and they start to look pretty awful after two, three years. So can we, can we put something in here, an informative or a condition, that, that the cabinets from now on, basically, wherever they are, when we have, oh, there's going to be, what, seven cabinets here, was it seven, five or something? But wherever eight, 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 yeah. it's even worse, isn't it? Wherever they're sighted now, can we get some get some maintenance done on these cabinets and the doors get <coughs> ripped open and left and, and all that sort of thing and it's just it looks horrible. But just if we could do that, Chairman, thank do you very much. Would you like officers to um try and tighten one of the conditions and share the final wording with the chairman and lay the lead? That'd be very good. Yeah, <laughs> I think they quite like that. <laughs> yeah, happy with that as well. I take it that would be me rather than Eddie, given I chair the yeah, meeting, yeah. Yeah. or Council of Labour, yeah. I should say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK. Right. Yeah, indeed, indeed. OK, um, right, uh, we've got a proposal, we've got a seconder. I'll take this to the vote. Uh, all those in favour? Yeah, unanimously uh, approved. Um, item 10, 47, Woodford Crescent. Pinner. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, the proposal is for a loft conversion and which would extend the hip roof over the single story rear extension to form a gable end including three side roof lights and one front roof light. I'll take members through the slides. 47 Woodford is there. Existing property, in effect what they're going to do is pull that down and have a rear extension on there which you can see. Uh, yeah. Um, photo to the back, so the front, um, neighbouring properties, that's the existing property, that's where the gable would come up to that point, um, the neighbouring properties, their own single story rear extension and the other property there, it is considered um, that there is sufficient degree of separation between the properties that there would not be significant overlooking or indeed a level of overlooking beyond that which might be expected in such a residential area, the side, side roof lights would serve non-habitable rooms. Um, or would act as secondary windows would not, and could be conditioned to be obscure glazed and non-openable below a height of 1.8. As such, it is not considered a proposal would result in an unable formal development, which significantly harms the residential amenities of neighbouring occupiers. And for the reasons summarised, it's recommended it be approved. I, I think it's also worth adding that the design of this particular extension is very similar to other ones in the wider locality that have been approved. Uh, I think that's quite an important point for me to add. Um, Councillor Higgins. Yeah, I go with those recommendations. I live in a bungalow. Lots of bungalows have been converted. This is not done actually quite <coughs> nicely. They haven't gone for too big, and they've just kept in keeping. So I will go with officer recommendation. Mm -hmm. Councillor Dot. I see right. Yeah. Okay. So proposer seconder. Um, all those in favour of officer's recommendation. Yeah. Unanimously approved. Um, final item. We've got a TPO. Uh, Application 32 Kings End Ricelip. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, that's it. No, I'm sorry, uh, Madam. You're not allowed to speak on this uh, because it's not a petition item. So, um, no, I, I think not on this occasion. Yeah, no, uh, no, no speaking rights. I'm afraid, unless it's a petition item. Yeah. So. Yeah, this is um, the proposed TPO tree here, and the reason it's been TPO'd is that um, there's been information that it may well be failed, so we're mm -hmm. TPOing it to protect it, as, as you can see there. Yeah. It's recommended it be approved. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Councillor Oswell. I'll move the officer's recommendation, Chairman. Uh, do I have a seconder, Councillor Higgins? Yeah, I'll move a seconder. I just want to just confirm on this that, uh, so that when they have to trim it, they have to come back to us, don't they? Is that correct? Y yes, so because I've seen some of these being done really badly, tree, yeah. uh, would require. Yeah, consent. well, I'll second that. Yeah, I'll second that. Thank you for you, Chairman. Okay, is that that's seconding? Um, okay, all those in favour of the TPA, um, that's unanimously approved. Uh, it's uh, 9:27, and I declare the meeting closed. Thank you.